the people you're referring to who were arrested because they committed crimes. Madam President, um, ladies and gentlemen, colleagues, before we enter into negotiations on this difficult resolution, I would like to say, having had many talks with members of the Turkish parliament, that I and my group and the majority of this house want the coup in Turkey to be clarified. We are in favor of uh, people uh, being uh, prosecuted under rule of law, those who were involved. What is not acceptable is that we are now being asked to approve mass imprisonments, mass persecutions, and disproportionate action against all Turkish politicians. Anyone who is even remotely associated with the Gulen movement uh, against judges who hand down independent sentences, against uh, liberal journalists, against uh, writers who are expressing their uh, free opinions in this debate. We are being expected to accept that that is all part of clarifying what happened during the coup. I think that developments over recent weeks have made it clear to us that we can cannot continue as we have done in the past before the change of the situation in Turkey, uh, which has no longer has anything to do with rule of law. Um, thus, the majority view in this House is that freezing accession negotiations with Turkey is the appropriate reaction. I have to say, in addition to that, that I have been in Turkey regularly recently, and I have been shocked again and again. Uh, Ahmed Turk was imprisoned recently. He is a highly respected individual who has supported the peace process and who has been the mayor of this uh, wonderful multicultural and multilingual st st town of Mardit. I'm really shocked by that. And at the same time, I find it difficult to imagine the future. I think that we should send the message contained in our resolution. But at the same time, I would like to say to ex-President Gul and ex-Prime uh, Minister Davutoglu and all of our colleagues in the Turkish parliament that what has guided us in Turkish uh, policy towards Turkey, which was trying to ensure freedom and security and democracy for both European citizens and Turkish citizens, is still what guides us today. I don't want to see an end to dialogue and attempts to achieve understanding with Turkey. And I say this. Uh, for the last time in my capacity as a um, co-leader of the Greens EFA group. And I think it would be a shame if uh, we were to lose the bridges that we have built over these last 12 years towards uh, Turkey. That would be very sad to my mind, because in all of the talks I've had with Turkish dissidents and opposition figures in recent weeks in Turkey, in all of these talks, we heard the appeal that the dialogue should be kept open. I would like to thank you for <coughs> listening to me, and I look forward to working um, in the future with uh, my colleagues here at, um, in the front row in other capacities. Mrs. Harms, there is a blue card from Mr. Van Darling. Are you ready to answer? Yes, Mr. Van Darling. Thank you, Madam President. President, just like the other uh, group leaders in this House, Mrs. Harms gives a very uh, good description of the abhorrent actions of Mr. Erdogan recently, and all uh, speakers before her also emphasized this. But then the final conclusion is that we want to continue dialogue, and therefore we're going to freeze a talk. So, well, what kind of dialogue is there? Mr. Erdogan is not listening to Europe. He is going his own way. He is arresting opponents, uh, um, cracking down on uh, dissidents. I was in Mardin recently, and I was told we have to get rid of him. So why don't we simply put a stop to this accession?
ich traue mir im Moment nicht. Well, I don't dare try to describe the prospects for the future of EU-Turkey relations, but you have to uh, try to look to the future. And I really do insist that it is in our interests for Turkey to return to rule of law and that in our neighborhood here, but also in other areas mentioned by Mr. Verhofstadt, that uh, we should have democratic countries there because this is a guarantee of greater security for us and for our people. In the case of Turkey, if you think about the wider region neighboring Turkey, then a democratic Turkey can have an impact on the whole region and can have a stabilizing effect. And for that reason, um, dialogue and uh, trying to achieve uh, mutual understanding is something that we can never give up on.